the whole world lies under the evil one and under it like an atmospheric, you can almost say an atmospheric blanket upon the world. There is a demonic, personal, evil power permeating the world. And I think that means that the prince um, shapes the patterns of this world order. Uh, it says specifically he works in the sons of disobedience. Notice the movement. There is power in the air, which is evil, but he works in a certain brand of people. They're called sons of disobedience, which I take to mean that to the degree that your heart is disobedient to God, to that degree are you under the control of Satan. And to the degree that your heart inclines to obedience to Scripture, to that degree has he no foothold in your life. Remember that, that passage in Ephesians, uh, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, give no place to the devil. That, the, the paradigm there is real clear. If you disobey Scripture and hold a grudge, Satan's got a foothold. If you obey Scripture and cast that grudge out of your life, Satan hits a wall. He can't get in. To that part of your life. Sons of disobedience run the world. That's how Satan runs the world. He doesn't merely run the world through kind of accidental bumping up against buses and things. He runs the world through sons of disobedience. So that if a newspaper, for example, has a lot of sons of disobedience who, who run it, it'll be a satanic newspaper. It'll have wickedness shot all through its editorials. If there's an entertainment industry that has a lot of sons of disobedience in it, that entertainment industry will be satanic. It'll have Satan's influences and power just shot all through it in its programming and in its movies and in its uh, plays and so on. And you just go right down the line in our culture. The, the patterns of our culture in its commerce, its industry, its entertainment, its arts, its recreations... All of them are, have a God over them, a prince. And there is an atmospheric evil that, shuts, that shoots through, and then that goes right into the sons of disobedience, and they bring out all kinds of philosophical ideas, all kinds of notions about social life, which are simply tinged or shot through with satanic evil. Now, John, in his gospel records Jesus as giving a new title to Satan that I haven't mentioned yet. Three times in the Gospel of John, John 12, 31, Jesus says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. Notice the phrase, ruler of this world. Here it is again, John 14, 30. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming... He has no power over me, but I do as the Father has commanded me. In other words, Satan didn't kill me without my letting him. That's what that means. Satan didn't get the upper hand in Gethsemane or at the cross. I submitted to God's design that Satan killed me. He was triumphant in his submission to the destruction of Satan. 1611 in John. The ruler of this world is judged. So, the whole world lies under the evil one, and therefore Jesus calls him the ruler of the world. And we just need to step back here and catch our breath. I mean, if your breath isn't at least partly taken away by these ascriptions, the God of this age the prince of the power of the air, the ruler of the world, the one under whose power the whole world lies. I just wonder how many in this room right now believe this. I mean, if you believe this, do you realize how utterly out of step you are with the world? How you have a worldview, if you believe what the Bible says here in these simple sentences, you have a worldview that is so radically different from the American worldview. 
How many people around you at work and at school and in your living quarters and neighborhoods believe that Satan is the God of this world and that the whole world lies under his power? How many people believe that? Hardly anybody believes that. If you believe that, you're crazy. You come from another planet. You're totally outdated. You have a worldview that is pre-scientific. It is just absurd to believe this. So says modern, post-enlightenment, secular, materialistic America. Now, I want you to realize this because it's so easy to just be in step with the world read the Bible and pass over these sentences as though they have some kind of other meaning than the awesome meaning that is lying on the face of it. There is a real supernatural power of stupendous proportions who exerts force in this world beyond anybody's imagination. Frank Peretti is really doing the world a great service no matter how many flaws there are in his novels. He's doing the world a great service by simply saying, if we could see the spirit realm, we'd be stunned. If you could see what rules the tribune, if you could see what rules the radio stations, if you could see what rules business and commerce, if you could see the demonic forces... With visual eyes, oh, how different things would be. So I just hope that you don't walk out of here saying, that's no big deal, you know. I mean, Satan's red, got a tail, two horns, cartoon, no problem. We have to beware of making an oversimplified conclusion here from some of the texts we've read. Namely... The conclusion that since Christ judged the ruler of this world and since he has cast him out, therefore he is of no consequence anymore in this age. You see, it does say, and these are glorious truths, now shall the ruler of this world be cast out as he approaches the cross. John 16, 11, the ruler of this world is judged. Hebrews 2.14, Christ took on human flesh, flesh in order that through death he might destroy him who has the power of death. Destroy him! Colossians 2.15, God disarmed the principalities and powers, made a public example of them, triumphing over them in the cross. Right on, no problem, Satan's gone, it's over, right? Five chapters later, Jesus prays in John 17, 15. I do not pray that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but, Father, that thou shouldst keep them from the evil one. He's still active. We'll talk about the decisive blow that was struck at Calvary. The decisive blow in the war of the kingdoms was struck. The atom bomb has fallen. But because the decisive battle is won, the war is not over. Mark it. Don't jump to a wrong conclusion. And we want to talk for many weeks about the victory and about how to live in it and how to advance it. But we must not minimize the enemy. 